So today, I've got lots of information for you about Modern Warfare 2. Activision recently invited me to a remote event where they showed a presentation all about this new game. They showed gameplay of various parts of it, the upcoming single player campaign, and they revealed a huge amount of detail about what we can expect from this sequel to Modern Warfare 2019. We've got new gameplay mechanics to cover, details about classic multiplayer, ground war, spec ops, Warzone 2, there is a lot in this video, but it's not going to stop here because there's going to be more information coming out over the next weeks and months. So make sure you subscribe to the channel, make sure you turn on notifications, and you can expect a lot more Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2 content on the channel coming very soon. Firstly, the vision for Modern Warfare 2. Pat Kelly, studio head at Infinity Ward, he took a moment to explain that the game is heavily inspired by real-world events that have shaped the world that we live in today, but that recent world events have been taken into account. The team has tried to be sensitive to what's going on when making this game. Modern Warfare 2 is being pitched as something human but heroic at the same time, that it feels alive more so than previous titles. It'll be an evolution, but that hopefully won't come with any added complexity for the player. So systems and elements have been pushed further, but the focus was always to make sure that players don't feel overwhelmed when they jump into this game. And Kelly finished up by saying that the team has been pushed all the way to make this the best work they've ever done. And that upon review, if something wasn't good enough, the team went back in to try and make it better. The game is going to feature a brand new physically based material system which will allow for state-of-the-art photogrammetry, a new PBR water system which we'll talk about, and underwater decal rendering systems, 4K HDR support and world volumetric lighting. So massive visual upgrades here that should help the single player campaign and the multiplayer elements really step up their visuals from the previous game. We got to see footage from quite a few different single player missions in the presentation, all of them focusing around different characters from Task Force 141, but the missions they really did give us a chance to see all the new mechanics in play for this game, not just for the single player, but these elements will be featured in the multiplayer and Warzone 2 as well. Now the story for the game, it picks up where Modern Warfare 2019 left off. Price was building the 141 team with those files in front of him. The story begins three years after that point, where 141 has been operating around the world to try and neutralize a terrorist conspiracy and an attack on the USA. But the action will be global, so you're going to be going everywhere around the world. Those iconic characters, they're returning, so you've got Price, Gaz, Soap, Ghost and Laswell, as well as a bunch of new characters like Colonel Alejandro Vargas from the Mexican Special Forces. There are quite a lot of new gameplay mechanics that we can talk about today, so we're going to dive straight in, literally, and talk about swimming and water. Swimming is a brand new mechanic added into Modern Warfare 2, and it's present in the single player campaign, co-op, multiplayer, and Warzone 2. We were shown a mission called Wet Work from the campaign that featured Gaz swimming around a harbour taking out bad guys on walkways around all the different boats. So you can swim on the surface of the water, you can dive underneath and you can hold your breath, moving around stealthily and you can flank enemies under the increasing cover of the darkness the deeper you swim under the water. Water in Modern Warfare 2, it can be clean so you can see right through it, it can be dirty so it's like brown or even polluted so you can barely see at all. And then on the surface, that can be clear as well, or it can be covered in debris like leaves and rubbish, which is going to provide even more cover. Now, water also introduces new bullet ballistics into the game. So if you fire shots into the water and you're trying to shoot somebody, when the bullets hit the surface, they're going to slow down, just like they would in real life. And it's going to take more shots to kill somebody who is immersed in water than it would be if they were standing next to you on the dock. That's an element that will be present in multiplayer and in Warzone 2 as well. In the water, when you're swimming around, you can only use your pistol to shoot, so no primary M4A1s unfortunately, but that's been done for balance reasons. If you dive into the water, you're either looking to evade a gunfight or you want to stealthily try and flank somebody and take them out. The mission also showed Gaz doing melee takedowns by lunging up out of the water and grabbing onto enemies that were close to edges, which was really cool to see, something that I did not expect. There were mentions of exploring underwater shipwrecks, swimming through rivers and rapids, going under waves in an ocean, and I think all of this was mentioned within the context of Warzone 2 as well, so there is a big chance here that the new map that's coming will feature water combat extremely heavily. 
Water will also play a part in vehicle combat as well. Vehicles in Modern Warfare 2 will now interact with water more realistically. They'll slow down when you hit the water at high speed. There are amphibious vehicles being present in the game. If you get out of a vehicle in the water, it will sort of float for a bit and then it will fill up with water and then slowly sink over time. Again, all of this is being mentioned when talking about making the world feel more alive. They even mentioned server-side wave technology, which would allow for waves in an ocean to be represented to every player on a server at the same time in exactly the same location. So this has got to be something for Warzone 2. Next, we're going to talk about weapons and the upgraded gunsmith in Modern Warfare 2. This is a really big step forward. There was a lot of detail scattered around the presentation, so I'm going to try and bring them all together. We've already mentioned the different bullet ballistics when shooting in or out of water in this game, but there was another mission that showed brand new repel mechanics where players were dropping down the outside of a building. They were like hanging upside down and looking to try and clear a room from the window. There are toe down and toe up options here, so you could repel down the right way up and then expose your whole body, but then you could switch midway and flip upside down as well, which looked pretty cool. And then for Gunsmith, the aim is to try and give players even more power and control compared to the current system that you might be used to in Warzone and MW19. This time, with a broader range of functions across a wide range of grounded military equipment and attachments. Now, the screenshot that they showed us in the presentation, there was an MP5 in the middle of the screen, and there were 10 different attachment positions on it. But at the top of the page, it said attachments, quote, three of three. Now, unfortunately, we didn't get the chance to ask any questions about this. And the game director, Jack O'Hara, did say that the gunsmith feature isn't finalized 100% yet. So take that with a pinch of salt. We've got no idea at the moment whether this game will have a five attachment system like MW19 or maybe they're going to take the 10 attachment system from Vanguard. I kind of hope they don't. I kind of hope we just have the five attachment system. But on the screen, it said three of three. So we really don't know anything about that yet. One of the key features of the new gunsmith system, though, is platforms. You'll start playing with an initial base version of a weapon, and as you unlock and progress your way forward, you'll get access to different versions of that weapon within the platform. The example they used was an M4, that's your base weapon, and then along the way you unlock the .458 SOCOM, the M16, and, and further on from that. So it's like moving along a family tree, you unlock different weapons within a given platform. All of the weapons within those platforms, they will have a shared pool of attachments and some unique attachments as well. That means that when you're playing with the weapons within that platform, you won't have to start from scratch on each individual weapon and unlock attachments for it because they're all shared between every single gun. There are, as I say, unique attachments that you will have to unlock for each gun, but a large pool of shared attachments means you won't have to grind significantly compared to the current Modern Warfare game. So. Hopefully that means less time grinding and just more time tweaking with the attachments and finding something that you want to use. And then the extension of Gunsmith, this really raised my eyebrows a little bit, but it sounded pretty cool. Modern Warfare 2 is bringing attachment tuning to the table. This is a feature that's being built for highly engaged players, so people like you and me that care about the nitty gritty and really wanting to get the best out of something. Each attachment in the game can now be tuned directly to perform slightly differently from its base characteristics. So the example that was given to us was a barrel for the MP5 SMG. On the screen, the tuning allowed for changing the weight of the barrel, which resulted in better recoil control when it was heavier and greater ADS speed or shorter ADS time when it was lighter. But that wasn't a binary option. It's not like you just chose one end of the scale or the other. You literally had a scale that you could move a set point on, giving you extremely granular control. So if you wanted a slightly heavier barrel for better recoil control, you could do that. Or you could whack it all the way up to the top and have a really heavy barrel. It was great for recoil control, but you would probably have a really long ADS time because of that. So you can just move it on the scale wherever you wanted, and it gives you a massive amount of control. And the same applied for the length of that barrel. So shorter meant better aiming stability and longer meant better aim walking speed. This kind of granularity is going to be absolutely game changing for the multiplayer and for the new Warzone experience. It's going to give us the chance to create some really, truly unique weapons beyond just different attachments themselves, because you've now got control of the individual attachments and how they perform. Now, there was a small mention from the team on not wanting to compromise weapon balance with this system, 
but they didn't really expand on that. And with that level of control, I think there might be some issues with creating some absolutely meta-breaking weapons compared to other stuff. We're going to have to wait for more information to see how it properly works, but it raised my eyebrow because I was like, that seems a bit risky, but it also seemed really, really cool because it's giving you even more customization than you've ever had before. Next, I've got some details on movement mechanics in the game. And remember, all of this is shared with the new Warzone experience as well. Multiplayer, single player, everything sort of comes together. We spoke about swimming already. That's going to be a big part of the game, being able to use it tactically instead of dying the moment you touch it, as was the previous case. There will be a new dive mechanic. This falls into the same category as the tactical sprint and the sliding mechanics that MW19 introduced. Dive is like an escape maneuver, so you can hold down the right button and you will literally dive onto the ground to get out of fire. But it's going to like take your gun down, so you can't really use it when you're diving, unlike the sliding mechanic, which keeps your gun up in front of you. But both of them kind of perform the same action because you're going to be diving into cover or sliding into cover. It's just going to be another option for you. You can use it in different ways. One of the examples we were given was diving out of a window of a second story building so that you can escape whatever's going on inside. Maybe somebody chucks a grenade up a staircase and your only option is to dive out of the window. But you're going to be able to do that in this game. And then ledge hanging is coming to Modern Warfare 2 as well. This is going to allow you to grab hold of a ledge and you can just hang there or you can go into ADS and then move forward and you will sort of peek up over the top of the ledge and you can see what's going on. And you'll even be able to use your pistol to shoot somebody who might just be right above you. The team even mentioned lunging to grab onto an enemy helicopter and then pull yourself up into it. That might be something for Warzone 2 because that would be absolutely amazing, but ledge grabbing across the entire game I think would be a good feature to add. The team mentioned that those times when you're parachuting and you just miss a ledge in previous games, well now you're going to be able to cancel the parachute and grab the ledge and pull yourself up rather than missing the ledge and then having to fly all the way down and find a staircase to get back on top of the roof. Next, I've got some details on the multiplayer maps that are coming to the game. Infinity Ward is separating their maps into two segments for Modern Warfare 2. We've got the battle maps and the core maps. Battle maps are your large exploratory maps for the ground war mode and I think the new Spec Ops co-op mode that's coming and of course the Warzone map as well. And then the core map, that's your 6v6 stuff. The two battle maps that were mentioned were Saeed and Sarif Bay. Saeed is an intense urban combat area that offers these really tight infantry spaces, but it's in like a big open sandbox area as well, so you can use ground vehicles. And then Sarif Bay is a tourist fishing village that has been specifically designed to incorporate the new water-based mechanics like swimming and amphibious vehicles. And then the core maps, like I said, they're built exclusively for 6v6 combat, and they are trending a little bit smaller, a little bit tighter with cleaner reads. These are your like special forces counter-terrorist style maps that are built for the small scale stuff. It's going to give you a more global experience. Lots of the maps are going to be spaced around the world compared to the battle maps, which by the sounds of things are taken from the new Warzone map, although I can't directly confirm that. The three core maps confirmed for the presentation were called Museum, Grand Prix and Farm 18. Museum is set in Spain. Grand Prix is set in Asia at night and the race on the track is still happening, which would be insane for lighting reasons. And then Farm 18, it's like this training facility inside an old cement factory with a large apartment building on the side. It's a bit like Shoot House, so that sort of feeling. There was then a larger portion of the presentation that was dedicated to the AI that's going to be present in Modern Warfare 2. It was all about making the look and feel of the AI be a lot more like a real person. There was this video that we were showed of somebody playing airsoft and they were like checking their corners religiously and sort of moving from room to room in the most tactical way possible, really doing their best trying not to get shot by enemy players. The team at Infinity Ward used that video to build a much more robust AI system for the single player and for elements of the multiplayer as well. The team also mentioned that they're pushing for higher AI counts than they have ever had before, specifically mentioning that they can have nearly 300 active AI at the same time on a server that has 100 real life players connected to it. And that mention was made about Warzone 2 and the larger scale maps. Warzone 2 has been rumoured already to have AI elements on it. So you heard it here, Warzone 2 will have AI on it to some degree. There was then a whole topic on vehicle gameplay, and this was directed more towards the larger scale maps that are being built for Ground War and Warzone, but of course the single player as well. 
there is a whole new suite of features coming to vehicles, so we're going to talk about it. One of the single player missions depicted this massive car chase scene, but it showed off the ability to lean out of the windows of your vehicles and fire your weapon from multiple different positions within the vehicle. And then you can drop back inside and you can maintain some cover. Maybe you need to play up or reload or something like that. And you can do this as long as the door of the vehicle is still attached. And yeah, that means that you can blow the doors off of vehicles in this new game. This could be absolutely massive for Warzone. Suddenly the door that's right next to you has just been ripped off the car by an RPG. And then you're like completely exposed to the elements and you can just be peppered with bullets. Hoods are going to blow off cars when they get damaged. The mirrors on the sides, they can be shot off. The bumpers are going to fly off the cars as well. So vehicles will feel a lot more modular compared to MW19. The team mentioned driving to a gas station to repair your vehicle. So that sounds something like a feature for Warzone. Maybe your truck is like nearly destroyed. Maybe you could roll up to a gas station and you can repair it and give you some more safety again. That would be pretty cool. You can also climb out onto the roof of vehicles from the inside now, rather than just being dropped out of the moving vehicle. And that will give you a different gameplay dynamic. Tires can be popped on vehicles and that will affect how the vehicles handle. So maybe you want to shoot the tires on the left side of a truck and the truck is obviously then going to pull to the left and it's going to slow down quite a lot. But you can also repair tires so you can go over and you can reinflate them when the time is right. Obviously not right in the middle of a gunfight when it's over. So let's say you have a gunfight, you were using the car as cover, they shot your tires, but you killed the enemy squad. Well, now you can reinflate the tires, get back in the car, even though it's damaged and you can get moving again. Vehicle shells, or vehicle husks as the team called them, will remain permanently on the maps when they're destroyed. That's unlike how they currently operate in Modern Warfare 2019. No longer will the vehicle just go poof in a cloud of smoke and then disappear. No, the shell will remain on the map and that could be used for cover later on in matches. Helicopter troop carriers were mentioned, so you'll have like one pilot and then inside the helicopter there'll be a big flat platform where there'll be a rear door that you can look out of and two side doors. So essentially it's like a big bertha truck in the sky and you, you can just sort of stand on that platform and move around, look out the window, shoot your guns. The team wanted more of that moving platform gameplay that you see in Warzone already, so they're trying to do that in the sky with a massive helicopter. And then amphibious vehicles. The APC and the Wilson were mentioned here. This will be a big feature for Warzone 2, no doubt. It was mentioned several times along with Ground War in this section, which is where vehicles obviously are going to play a big role. And then just to sort of wrap things up here, I've got some details on some new gadgets and bits of tech that were mentioned later on in the presentation. The first one is the tactical camera that's coming to the game. So you know like those home security cameras you get, those little white things that you screw onto the wall and then you can like point it at your front door. Imagine something like that, you just sort of throw it up on a wall outside of a building and then you can enter the camera and you can keep an eye on things outside. And if, you're, if members of your squad also have those cameras deployed, they link together and you can cycle through them to give you multiple different viewpoints. So let's say a four-man squad goes into a building in Warzone 2, somebody puts their camera on the north side, one on the south side, one on the ground floor, one upstairs looking down the staircase, and you can switch between the cameras and you can keep an eye on what's going on. There's also the drill charge. This is a lethal. You throw it onto a wall, it attaches and then drills through the wall, and then it throws a grenade through the hole that it's just made and it blows up on the other side. Obviously, an enemy team is going to hear that drill, so the team said this could be like a nice softener. It's unlikely you're going to get too many kills with it, but if a grenade's coming through the wall, people are going to run away from that, so it might force a team to think a bit differently. Maybe you could move into the building whilst they're distracted. You can also throw them onto enemy vehicles, and if players don't jump out, they'll be killed by the grenade that's being tunneled through the bodywork. But interestingly, it won't damage the car too much. It will just kill the players inside of it, which means if you actually successfully did that and got the kills on those players, you could then nick their vehicle and drive off in it. There's a new field upgrade called the DDoS, which made me laugh. It's essentially an EMP device that will disable enemy equipment nearby, and it will also disable the engines of vehicles for a short time. Drivers of vehicles that have been hit by an EMP, they will get a button prompt to restart their engine once that EMP blast is over. And I think that means that if they got EMP'd and jumped out of the vehicle, the engine would be switched off until someone then got back in the vehicle and turned it back on again, which could be interesting in certain gameplay situations. 
And then lastly, there was this crazy inflatable decoy mine. You basically throw it out like a pie in Warzone. And then it deploys like an airbag when an enemy comes too close. It like pops out really, really fast. And it inflates into the shape of a soldier. And it will point towards the soldier that triggered the detonation. So it looks like somebody's just jumped out of nowhere and is about to shoot you. It's, it's obviously a decoy, but you could actually use it tactically as well because you can manually set it off. You don't have to wait for an enemy to set it off. So let's say you're trying to move across an open space, but you've set up a decoy in a window of a building or on the roof of that building. And then maybe you're getting peppered by bullets by an enemy team or something like that, and you're stuck in the open field. Or you could deploy that airbag inflatable decoy mine thing and it might distract some fire off of you whilst you make a move. And that is just about everything that I can remember from that presentation. I tried to get as everything I could into this video. I, I appreciate it's like 22 minutes long at this point, but I thought you'd appreciate as much information as possible. And there will probably be more information coming out over the next few weeks and months as we go towards the launch of this game. I'll be covering it all here on the channel. So make sure you're subscribed, notifications turned on. I'll be posting a lot more Modern Warfare 2 information stuff as we move forward. And then, of course, once the game launches, you know the gameplay videos and all the streams are going to be starting. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks very much for watching. I'll catch you next time.